Your site's Michael Finney, live in Oakland, with a look at what you can do to try to protect your home. Michael? What we're going to do is go through this house step by step, just like it was your house, to make sure you're very, very safe. Now, to help me to do that, from Byers um, uh, Security Consulting is Anthony Byers. And we're starting at the front door because you wanted to talk about this light, right? Yes, I did. Lights are very important for any house, motion detector sensors, but also dust to dawn lights. So this is a perfect example. This is a manual light, Michael. And basically, what we're going to do is convert this to a dust to dawn detector. The reason being is that now all you have to do is let the sensor pick up the daylight and the nighttime light, and that will turn on the light. If you don't turn it on and off like that, then the yeah. bad guys know when you're home and when you're not. Is uh, that the problem? Absolutely, because what they're doing is they're watching your routine. So under surveillance, they will watch when your light actually comes on, when it goes off. And if it just stays on all the time, they're going to know that you're not home. Okay, now let's talk about this. We have a screen, uh, security screen door. I mean, that seems safe, right? Yes, it is. The problem with this door in particular, Michael, is that it has a very thin screen. The actual burglars and people who want to get into your house, they carry a tool so they can actually cut this and they can reach in and actually unlock your door. <laughs> oh, the no. other problem is it has a very cheap lock on it. So this is a very cheap lock, like a grade three. They can bump lock this as well. So what you want to do is change the components of the lock mechanism and make this a little bit tougher to cut so they can actually not get inside. How much would this cost, fixing that lock, putting the sensor on that light? What are we talking about? Um, you're probably talking about 20, 30 bucks. Hmm. And actually, if you go with a bigger company like a Reed Brothers or whatever, you might spend a little bit more because they might install it for you. But it's not that inexpensive. Most of these products you can get from Home Depot. One more thing. You were talking about the mailbox. You're real concerned with that. I am. Identity theft is a huge thing around here. Most of the time they drive down the street in opposite directions and they clean out every mailbox that is not actually locked. So if you're going to have a mailbox that is acceptable from the street, you need to make sure it's a secured locked mailbox. Anthony Byers, Buyer Security, he's going to be with us all afternoon. We're going to go through this house step by step so you can learn how to protect your house. We're going to be talking dollar figures, so hang around. Yeah, that's what we're after today. We're doing a security check of your home using this one as a stand. And we started at the front door. Now we're here at the back door. Our security consultant, Anthony Byers, is right here. He wanted to stand over there and walk in because you're not real thrilled with these plants, right? No, uh, the key is that you don't want to allow anyone to be able to hide within your yard. So what we want to do is actually set up our yards with cactus and things like that so that is crime prevention through environmental design. Ah. That's the key concept in how you want to set up your yard. And you want people to be able to see through it so that That's it right. doesn't make a screen for them. That's right. And you don't want the criminals to be able to just jump over your fence or to have open access and be able to hide and conceal themselves so that they can approach a door like this, which is very vulnerable. Yeah, let's talk about this back door. You say back door is not the best, huh? Not the best. This is out of the way. This is concealed. I can easily hide back here. And then what they normally would do with a door like this is just kick it open basically it'll wow. pop open it has a very cheap inexpensive lock on it and they can basically just kick in and they're in okay so let's open up this door yes. the problem is aside from the locks themselves is there's just not much securing it here no that's right actually you can purchase quick remedies and fixes like at a place like Home Depot or wherever you choose to purchase it. For instance, you can reinforce this piece right here. It'll cost you about 15 bucks. With metal? With metal. Okay. Just reinforce it, make it a little bit deeper. You can reinforce this as well so that the wood doesn't split. The lock is a little bit more secure, and then you can also upgrade this lock as well. So those fixes all together will cost you about $30, and you can at least reinforce it. But the bottom line is this. If you really want the correct solution, you want a security door on the outside here. That way, they cannot have access directly to this door. The security door will prevent the kick-in as well.
All right, Anthony Byers, Byers Security. He's going to be with me all day long. We're going to be back a bunch of times going over this house step by step in an effort to make your home safer. So far, what have we spent, Anthony? 25, about 50, um, 75 so bucks? You spent probably 60 bucks up front. You spent about 30 bucks here. That's less than 100 bucks at max. Okay, so we're less than 100 bucks. We'll keep an ongoing tally. Yeah, I'm in a garage. A lot of people don't think about that. They think about their front door, their back door. They don't even think about their garage, and whoa, that can be a huge mistake. Here to talk about that is Anthony Byers. He's with Byers Security. He's been walking through this house the whole time. So garages, first of all, you point to that door. Yes. What's the problem in here? Well, number one, there is a genie that has one cold. It's not a rotating, revolving cold genie, right. which means it can easily be picked up from the outside. And you have to periodically change your cold as well just to keep it safe. And the, that's any garage door opener. It any either garage. either needs to rotate on its own or you need to do right. it. Right, on okay. occasion. Don't keep the same one for year after year after year like this one. The other issue is that there's windows. If you're going to have windows on your lower basement, they need to be covered. Have a curtain so that when you leave, those windows can actually protect your privacy on the inside. Uh, so people don't look in and see what that's you've right. got and want. You said... An alarm system in a car can help more than just the car. Absolutely. Um, what you have to realize is if you have a basic alarm but you have a panic button, mm -hmm. that can be actually a deterrent as well. Because if there is an emergency, you can have your neighborhood watch team realize that if you set up your panic button, that's a cue that something's going on in your house. The other thing is it's a deterrent to criminals. They don't want a lot of noise. So use that panic button if you need it in an emergency situation. And I assume you ought to turn on your car's alarm when it's just parked in your garage? Absolutely. The more security you have in place, okay, let's the better. Go this way. They're telling me we've got to hurry up. But uh, Anthony really thought it was important that we come through here because he says this is one of the biggest security flaws in most homes. Anthony, I'll let you talk about that right now. What are we talking about? Okay, so most of the time, as you look at this window right here in front of you, that window is going to be open a lot because people like to ventilate and have air coming in through their home. Well, burglars love to come through those windows as well. So if you're not home, make sure you secure that window. And then you also have a motion sensor in your hallway so that if the burglar does come through that window, it activates It'll your sensor. Picked up. That's right. Uh, we're, Ant and I are going to keep talking uh, throughout the afternoon, so hang around. Um, I'll tell you one more thing. When you drive home today, look at homes, and you're going to see bathroom windows open on your entire trip home. You guys, we've been going through this house step by step by step, and now we're in the living room. Joining me is Anthony Byers. He's with Byers Security Consulting. Okay, so we're finally in the living room, so it's time to talk about an alarm system, a surveillance system. What's the difference? What do you need? An alarm system is basically something that you want to put into the house that has door sensors, window sensors, motion sensors. You can add other components as well, but it's about your budget. What you're looking for, have you done your research? Do you know what the good companies are? Do you know what the references are? Do you know that you're going to be put under a contract? Do you want a system actually that you can install yourself? Or do you want a system that's monitored? So you have to make a few decisions in your process. So this isn't going to be quick. No, you really do want to do your homework because what you want to make sure is that you don't get locked into a deal that's going to lock you into a two to three year contract and then you're going to get nothing for the value that you expect. Yeah, it was something you didn't like. That's right. Um, how difficult is it to install one of the systems yourself? Well, you know, a lot of people have little skills. They know how to install them. But I never really recommend self-installed systems because, unfortunately, you do want something to have your back. You do want to be monitored. You do want to have some protection just in case you're not home or your kids are not home and nothing can be picked up. It also depends on your technology savvy skills. Right. which is an important part of the process. Let me ask you this. So back in the day, yes. the people that would break into our homes were teenagers. Summers were a terrible time because they're just hanging out That's with nothing right. to do. And then ne'er-do-wells that wandered by and saw an open window or an open garage. You're saying it's completely different now. Oh, it is totally different. As a matter of fact, one of the things that has happened is that there's a lot more gangs involved, which means that it's a lot of lucrative opportunities. Identity theft, uh, being able to actually go into homes, steal jewelry. Most people don't have a bolted or wall or floor safe. So it's easy to take, it's easy to give, and three or four people into your home at one time, they can technically give what they want in five minutes or less. 
Anthony Byers, Byer Security. We're going to keep talking to him about your home. We're using this house as a stand-in. Reporting live from Oakland, I'm Michael Finney. We've been doing an assessment of this home, a security assessment, to see how safe it is and how we can make it safer. Um, Anthony Byers from Byers Security has been helping us with this. Um, we're in the bedroom, and most people think, done. I don't have anything going on in the bedroom. Safety, security. No way, huh? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, little things like this, for instance, this is just a box of jewelry. You know, it's out. It's not protected. It should actually be located in a safe. A bolted floor or wall safe is preferred. Doesn't cost very much, actually. It costs about 50 bucks. So uh, a, a jewelry box should never even be used except right. for um, maybe costume jewelry because Absolutely. don't put serious expensive items, right. right? Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about the safe. You said we need a safe. But where? Where do you put a safe? Okay. How do you do it correctly? Absolutely, Michael. So here's a good example of that. So you don't want the safe just, just to be out. You want the safe out of the way, kind of hidden, right. so that it's not actually recognized when the criminal first walks in. And you want a bolted floor, on the floor, a bolted wall safe. And if you don't bolt it, they just pick it up and take off? They just it? pick it up and take it right <laughs> off the door. So <laughs> oh, that's important. No. Oh, no. Okay, now let's talk about... Physical ID theft, most people have never heard of this. That's right. Well, unfortunately, the criminals can fence things really fast and quick. So one of the things they look for is stuff like this. Uh -huh. Stuff that is just laying around that might have some uh, partial social security number, a driver's license, DMV so stuff. So your bills. Right. And basically what they can do is they can get that information, and a lot of times they're just photograph it. They'll just take a photograph, or they might even take one out of the middle. They might select a couple items. But they, they can want. photograph it, put it back in. So they pull it out, mm -hmm. open it up, take a photograph. Yes. You don't know what's happening. That's right. And they put it right back. And you know, the bottom line is a lot of people are not paying attention to all those little details of what's happening with their DMV, what's happening with their Social Security, what's happening to retirement. Actually, people have their retirement money stolen all the time. You know how hard it is for me and you yeah. to get our retirement yeah. money? So, <laughs> yeah, true identity theft. That's Anthony right. Byers, Byers Security, thank you very much for joining us reporting live from Oakland. I'm Michael Fitt.